thank you. I think it was the first time I've ever been described as the voice of digital health in Ireland. Um, I'm here to talk about the logic of open. What this is about, like many other things in human affairs, is power, control, and money. Very basic question. Who owns my medical records? My medical records are, sh are sheaf about six feet thick in Vincent's Hospital. Another sheaf of x-rays representing probably 150,000, 200,000 worth of investigations and God knows how many lab tests. Who owns all of that? Do I own them? Does St. Vincent own them? Do my consultants own them? It's actually surprisingly vague. There's a number of rather odd British court decisions which say the Secretary of State for Health owns them in the UK. And presumably, on that basis, the Irish courts will decide Sam Harris owns them. That doesn't seem like a good way to do business. The logic of open is that patients own their data. And patients control what to do with their data. And you may not like sometimes what patients choose to do with their data, but actually it's their data. You have to figure a way of seeding that control to them and making it available to them. Who else wants to own the data? Second big group that wants to own the data are the tech companies. Many of you have probably seen Fitbits. Um, there are a myriad of Fitbits and similar devices which track your data, track your movements, track your accelerations, track your location. George Orwell could not have imagined anything in quite that scale. Each of those devices, when you buy them, you sign a contract which essentially sees all rights, whatever, in the data, in perpetuity, non-revocable, litigatable under the laws of Delaware. And litigating corporations under the laws of Delaware is entirely futile. Um, to a corporation you've never heard of, probably based in tax savings somewhere. And your data disappears into this black hole, and it is not accessible. You end up with your data in a silo. So if you use the Fitbit this year and you use whatever the new toy is next year, you can't transfer the data across, in most cases, to see what has changed. Actually, the data is controlled by the company. If you're a GP using the dominant GP IT system in this country, who controls your data? The company actually controls your data. If you want the data out, you're going to have to pay them. We're doing some work and project with GPs right now, and we have a sizable budget to pay the company to extract the data from the system. If you bring in a, an EHR into a hospital and you want to attach a new blood monitoring device to it, the company will smile benignly at you and say, of course, of course, that'll be $50,000. And if the model is updated next year, uh, these other $50,000, and this is known as the bonus or the profit margin. We need to be very, very careful. So I never understood how one of the major EHR systems worked until it was explained to me that it started life as a hotel bed management system. Morphed to become a hospital bed management system and is now a, a, a management information system for hospitals with an EHR bolted onto the side. And there's a wonderful literature from the United States about the usability of these systems and the amount of time clinicians spend 14 layers down in the menu looking for the box. And there is no usability because these systems were not designed for clinicians. So from my point of view, the primary users of all of these systems are clinicians. I had an interesting conversation with the CEO of a disability service yesterday about ICT. What this person wants is a system that will allow them to monitor activity, monitor days of work, monitor staff hours, hook into finance, hook into the HR system, hook into the building management system. But I've actually spoken with the staff who spend their entire lives filling in forms because it's a highly regulated sector. There's a great deal of documentation produced each day on each service user. 
And I said, that is what you need to automate. That is the primary users for your system, and everything else flows out of that. And this person's eyes opened wide and went, yeah, yeah, that is it. So we have to build this stuff from the ground up so that we control it. It's not controlled by a large corporation somewhere in the United States, or somewhere in Germany, or somewhere anywhere else. It is controlled from here. And it is open because it is only by having an open system that we can allow patients to access their data and control it. It's only by having an open system that we can integrate the system together, and I'll say more in a moment about why that matters. It's only by having an open system that we can plug in the things we want and that we can afford to develop it as things move forwards. There was a conversation earlier about adapting one of the big EHR systems to how Irish hospitals work. That is a red flag. That is failure. I've seen hospitals try to do that. I can think of a hospital in the UK that spent £100 million pounds trying to do that and then ripped it out and started again. These systems are like SAP. If you install SAP, you suddenly decide you're going to work the SAP way. If you install CERN, and CERN is an eminently workable system, lots of places work in it, but they only work in it if you decide you're going to work the CERN way. And as for Epic, Epic won't let you install it unless you agree, sign up, and pledge the life of your firstborn child <laughs> that you're going to work. And actually, they're right. They're absolutely right. That is the right way to do business. But you have to do it their way, because otherwise it doesn't work. And if their way doesn't suit, then you need to do something else. And the risks of these systems are huge capital spend. I spent a substantial part of yesterday, instead of preparing for this meeting, talking about the HSE capital plan on the radio, and reading through the capital expenditure for the last five years for HSE. Anyone who thinks it's 857 million for ICT is clearly looking to different pages to the one I'm looking at. We're not going to have the money for these solutions. Um, be very straight, very plain, very direct. The, the type of solutions we can actually afford are things, things like, and I'm not saying this is a solution we should go for, but Jordan brought in Open Vista for their whole health service for about 80 million. That's an example of what can be done. Why does this matter? We have two charming features. We have the youngest population in Europe. And we will have the youngest population in Europe for the next 40 years, at least, which will see me out nicely. Um, so whatever the commentators say, actually, our demographics are most favorable in Europe. We also have, the, depending on how you look at it, the most expensive, the second most expensive, the fourth most expensive healthcare system in Europe. We spend the same kind of money as the Germans and the Swedes. I am intimately familiar with both those healthcare systems. They are far, far, far better than ours. Far. There's no comparison. We cannot afford to carry on as we're carrying on. Roughly speaking, 5% of patients spend half the healthcare budget. <coughs> patients like me, I've had a, a carcinoid tumor. I've had five liver transplants. I've had more CT scans, MRIs, and other imaging devices than you can imagine. I have four chronic conditions, so I'm still standing. <laughs> but I'm very expensive. I think I'm worth it, you might just <laughs> but I'm very expensive. So I am the top 5% of patient health expenditure. And there is an illusion that this is all elderly people with multiple chronic diseases. That's not. A lot of it is people like me. A lot of it is people with younger people with serious illnesses at various times. Managing expenditure in those people requires linking services and linking information. What we are doing at the moment is we are constructing silos. I have a colleague who works in Rhode Island, which is substantially smaller than Ireland, 
Every hospital in Rhode Island has had electronic health records since the year dot. They communicate with each other by fax. <laughs> they send the electronic health record systems send faxes to each other. I'm not quite sure what happens when fax arrives, but that's what happens. We can't afford that. We haven't got the amount of money Rhode Island has to spend for healthcare. So we have to be smart, we have to be efficient, we have to be very tight, and we have to get things done. At the moment, we do not have an individual health identifier. The individual health identifier project at a current rate of rollout will roll out the entire population in 3053. That is not acceptable. We do not have a working data dictionary. We do not have a basic foundation stone for healthcare. We have to deliver those things. We have to get those things in place. And we have to have a program, a real program, that will deliver over a very short period of time. It's not you. Because laundry care is the only way out of our bond. Every year, HSE gets a supplementary budget. The only question in the door, I think, at the moment is not will there be a supplementary budget, but will it be 350 million, 450 million, or 550 million? And my money's at 450 million. You can come back to me in November and tell me if I'm right. Um, that money is happening because we're not planning properly. We are actually spending the money we should be spending on Solentric Care, bailing out pieces of the system. And we can go on doing that forever because it's less painful. But where we end up with is a healthcare system that will cost more than the US healthcare system. Commonest cause of bankruptcy in the US is health bills. My, my sister is a mid level civil servant in Kentucky. Her health insurance for a single person is $1,200 a month. It's her biggest expenditure after her mortgage. That's what we're talking about. And whether it's health insurance or taxes, it's not sustainable. So we are actually at a crunch point. We are at a real point of crisis. My take on it is either we go open or we go home. I would vote for going open. Thank you.